2011, there was only really Man Against Horse, Old Pueblo, Zane Gray, and Javelina. There were no other races. You know, Air Vipe had just kicked it off their series, I think, that year, or they're planning on it. So there's no other races anywhere, um, at least mountain races. And Arizona's got so much diversity. I wanted to create something that has, you know, a mountain hunter that you can show off a lot of what Arizona has, and a lot of people don't even realize exists here. This area is been left out of the loop for so long and um, it's a perfect spot for it you know small town mountain town a hundred is it's a whole nother world so you know you got red rocks you've got huge massive climbs that um, there's just too much I mean originally it was like 128 miles was like the first one I was gonna do and back then nobody even there's no fat dog there's it was kind of it was too long so to speak well, I like a challenge, and uh, this is about one of the most challenging courses that I'm aware of, especially for a um, semi-local 100 miler. After I finished the first time, I wasn't going to. I didn't have any plans to do it the second time, but um, I figured, well, why not? It's just, it's such a beautiful um, place to be, and I was fortunate enough to be able to come up here this summer and train, and um, it was just, a, it's just a beautiful place to, to go for a run. I was fortunate enough to run the very first Mogollon Monster. Uh, my friend Jeremy Doherty, who's the founder of the race, invited me to come and run it. After I didn't have a very great Leadville experience, I agreed to come and run and had just kind of one of those perfect races. Everything went right and ended up uh, winning the inaugural event, which is really special to me for the fact that I grew up here and you know, it's a tough mountain hundred right in my own backyard here in Arizona. My name is Nadine Haluszczak. I ran the Mogollon Monster last year as my second hundred mile race. Um, you know, I was drawn to the race, just not only the beauty of the course, but the fact that you're climbing up and down the rim uh, four times through the race. And I, I just was drawn to really the, the diversity of it and the challenge. I'm Michael Miller and I'm doing the Mogollon Monster 100. In addition to the uh, Hard Rock Qualifier, uh, a couple years ago we tried it and uh, uh, there were some weather issues and had to stop so I got halfway done so definitely want to uh, get out there and get the full course and uh, make it happen. I ran it last year and although I did not finish, I, I fell in love with the alpine running and being out in nature. We get all the trails in Phoenix and they're really great races, but this one was like my favorite, even though it is pretty difficult. I just couldn't wait to come back and do it again. I think the thing that's most inspiring for me is, as a, as a kid, my grandparents owned a cabin up uh, in um, Verde Glen, which is a little bit south of Washington Park. But I spent a lot of time up here, even in high school, I'd come up and spend summers with them. And this area is almost like a second home to me. To have a race up here, it's just uh, something that I feel like I have to do. My name is Andy Pearson and I'm running the Magian Monster 100. I uh, actually came out here uh, the first year it was run back in 2012. Um, it had a blast and it was just, it was my second uh, 100 miler ever. So I just kind of wanted to return, kind of get beat up by the course a little bit and um, see if I could survive again. You know, when I run out here, there's so much up and down, up and down, up and down. And um, I just always say, just like with any race, you know, just take whatever the trail gives you. and don't push the rest. So if you get the good down and you feel really good, I always say just take that because you may not get another one for a long time and um, you can make up a lot of time that way. If you just hold back, you may be holding back and then you're hit of hills for the next eight miles. So you just just take whatever it gives you because it's, it's gonna beat the living piss out of you. <laughs> I mean, I think when I first came out here training, I didn't know if I'd be able to complete it. And once I got out here, just running it, being able to, to push myself as hard as I did while meeting incredible people along the way, it was one of the most rewarding things that, that I've ever done. And this year, I think the other part is, I've, it's been a while since uh, I've had some, I've had a good long run, so <laughs> I need one. And uh, it's kind of a nice feeling going in a little bit nervous, uh, you know, and not quite sure. I like that, that should give me some energy. So I'm excited about that part. I'm not going to go out as fast. <laughs> I got caught. I was leading the, uh, the female uh, race up until about mile 50 coming into Washington Park and um, I ran into some stomach issues and I just kind of slowed down and had to take my time and 
leaving Washington Park uh, at night with my pacer, um, we just decided to chill and get through the night and um, see if I could get my stomach back into order. And um, it never really did come all the way around, but I managed to finish in second place and I was happy with that. It's hard to train in the summer. I'm sure everybody in Phoenix knows that, but uh, I feel like this summer I have, I had the best training summer I've had living down in Phoenix. It's yeah. hard to get those miles in in August, but this year went pretty well. Because it looks like we're going to have great weather. Um, doesn't look like it's going to get too cold at night. Last year, I remember we got a little chilly, and uh, this year it looks to be like it's going to be really a great, a great race, a great run. Another reason I wanted to do this race is. Hard Rock has always been a dream of mine since I started trail running and this race is a Hard Rock qualifier, um, points for UTMB and you know you really get the feel of what it's like to run in the mountains, in the trails um, instead of you know a looped course and for me I just wanted to get the experience of you know pushing myself through some climbs and having that challenge and I, I definitely got that at this race. Yeah I'd like to go sub 24 now that's a little easier. Um, Originally, I'd, you know, I'd love to win, um, but we'll see what happens tomorrow. It's just a beautiful, beautiful area. Uh, the trail itself uses part of the Zane Gray Highline 50, so it's really technical, um, but stunningly beautiful course. Uh, and unlike Zane Gray, which stays below the Mogollon Rim, the Mogollon Monster, uh, it goes up and down the rim, and that's one of my favorite aspects of it. Uh, you know, I personally like climbing and the diversity of the trails between below the rim and above it. It's just really cool. The cabin loops up top are flatter and faster. And they're also up around 7,000 feet. So you're just in these really thick ponderous pine forests. Uh, down below the rim, you have more of a mix of like desert plants, uh, pine trees, junipers, and kind of uh, in the fall, you've got the fall colors. It's just a really special time of year to be out here. It's, this is such a beautiful area. You know, running out here is spectacular. So uh, it kind of feels like some unfinished business. I got to get that full course. You know, uh, the, how this, this course founded and came about. And this is, you know, this is uh, like the rest of Aravite, but now and Jeremy started this. It's, it's, it's a family. This is Arizona community. This is like our course. This feels like home stuff. So I got to do this. It's like doing Zane Gray. It's a rite of passage. We're, we're from the desert. This is, this is home. We gotta get this buckle. So you've only seen a view of the mountains, but you haven't seen the dramatic drop off. You come through Turkey Springs and it's just full woods. I mean, it's perfect pine cones, pine needle trail. And then all of a sudden it's just this blue screen coming through the trees and just drops off. I did a training run out here and I just, I fell in love with the trails, with the beauty of the view on the rim. And I liked how remote the race was and it just really kind of made me fall in love with the sport even more. I think, you know, in this area, you get to see a little bit of everything in the trails. And there's, you know, some really tough climbs, some really technical parts of it. But then you'll pop out on the rim and just have a view of, you know, you can't even put into words how beautiful the view is. I love this area so much that, like, whenever I go back and think about it, I can always visualize the different parts of the course. Um, so I'm excited to get out and just, I, I think I can... I, last time I came out here, I had no idea what I was doing. I, and it was, I was totally by myself and I was in the dark, just like trying to find my way through it and everything. So it was a lot more surprises. And this time I really, I, I know all the sections of the course. And so I'm looking, looking forward to kind of seeing them again and, and hopefully running a little harder this year. The Houston brothers, they, uh, they came out from Texas and they did a lot of cattle ranching. So the actual climb that you go up from Washington Park, they used to push sheep and cattle up that thing. And that's how they got them up to those upper meadows. And he, if you're driving up to Washington Park and you go through this little town called Houston Mesa, Sam Houston was one of the two brothers and he died there when he got up into the stirrup and he shot himself in the leg and he bled himself out. <laughs> Fun fact. So, but they name a lot of those trails are off of that. You know, Barbershop Trail, which is one of the cattle loops, it's named after, uh, it was, they used to run sheep through there in the 1890s, and he was, since he shears sheep, that's who everybody got a haircut from. So they would go to that guy's cabin to do it, you know. You know, Pinchot Cabin's named after Gifford Pinchot, the founder of the National um, Forest Service. Um, so, you know, those, those were all lookout fire stations at one point, but, you know, General Crook used to, he did all the Indian Wars, really the last American Indian Wars in the 1870 to 1872. And that whole rim road was the um, General Crook Trail. So you can actually follow it, you'll get lost, but it's 
crisscrosses with the rim road for 50 miles and they used to run buckboards across that all the way out to Fort Whipple and Prescott. You know, I can't even imagine what that was like 150 years ago. You know, they had the Tonto, in, Tonto Apaches and then the other, uh, a different reservation of Apaches and they used, that's literally used to be where they would fight and battle. So where Washington Park is, the top of Washington Park is the Battle of Big Dry Wash. That's the last American Indian War um, battle in Arizona. So it's right off the course on the way to Pinchot on the Arizona Trail. My friend Jeremy um, founded the race and I was lucky enough to do a training run with him when he was telling me how it all came about and just how much he fell in love with this area of Arizona and how close it was to Phoenix. You know, you could drive up and do a run and head back that same day. And as we were running and we stopped and looked out over the rim, I was just completely blown away and I knew that I wanted to do this race. And now it's really has a special place in my heart and I plan to be out every year if not racing, then at least supporting and encouraging other people to come out here and enjoy these trails in this race. I don't something about the pine trees out here are just it's such a such a cool landscape and then every time I got out here I always see like elk crashing through the woods and um, it's just a it's such a brutal course that it's but it's equally as beautiful and um, there's no part of it that's bad. So I just love every everything that it throws at you. Yeah. I'm just, I'm looking to have fun. Like I said, last time I was here by myself, and this time I have pacers. Um, and so I'm actually excited to like take them out and show some people this, this area and stuff. So I'm just gonna go out and rip and have fun, hopefully. You know, I, I, I kind of the, the whole experience and seeing everybody, it's kind of neat that, I, you know, we know a lot of the folks, it's us, right? So seeing it, hitting the aid stations, seeing the people, getting some hugs. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be a great day. Do I believe? I've read and looked at pretty much everything that has anything to do with the Mogia Monster at this point. Uh, even just today, I was like, I swear something's following me. And maybe it's not a Bigfoot, but it could be a mountain lion or something, but... Do, of course I believe. I've got the hat, i got a sticker on the car. I actually have a small um, stuffed animal that I might be um, running with tomorrow as my good luck charm. So, yeah, I do believe. <laughs> I do believe, <laughs> without question only letdown I had in the race is there was no sightings, but everything else about the race was just incredible. No. <laughs> Do I believe? I believe in the monster now. He attacked me. I'll find out someday. <laughs> yes, it is out there and it'll take someone out this year. That's my prediction. I always feel like there's something out there looking at me when I'm all by myself. So I stop listening to music and it's just it's a little different, you know, Hell's Gate at night by yourself is super creepy. Um, but I don't know that I don't believe, I guess is the best answer.